Hello, Photopillers, Rafael the Bard here. I get this question a lot. Rafa, how can I plan a photo of the moon appearing behind the mountain? How do I take into account the terrain in the planning? Well, it's time to answer this question. Long story short, in this video you'll learn how to plan a photo around the next full moon when it's above a mountain, when it appears behind a mountain, step by step. We'll see how to find the shooting spot and how to find the shooting time the moon is where you want it to be compared with your mountain. Also, we'll see how to check the natural light you'll get at the time of the shooting, which is key to know if you can get a shot in one single exposure or we need to do a bracketing or to take two exposures to catch a detail on the moon and on the foreground. And last but not least, we'll see how to plan the field of view and the depth of field to make sure that you get both in focus the moon and your mountain, your foreground. Ready? Let's get started! Go to Photopills, tap on Planner, and as always, the first thing you need to do when you're planning a shot is to place the red pin you see on the map in the area you want to plan the photo. In my case, I have the red pin on the beautiful island of Menorca. Okay, I said I was going to plan a shot around the next full moon, so the first thing I'll do is to set the next full moon date. How do you do it? Just tap on the uh, time bar here, double tap on the time bar to set the day to today and then tap on the moon icon you see on the top panel here until you get to the full moon date which happens to be August 22, 2021. Now that I have set the full moon date, I see on the map the moonrise direction, the thick blue line and the moonset direction, the thick dark blue line and I have the moonrise and moonset times on the top panel. So the, the moon is uh, rising at 9 p.m. in the direction of the thick light blue line and it's setting at 6.35 a.m. in the direction of the thick dark blue line. These lines are key and will help me find the shooting spot. Okay, the second step is to place the black pin right on top of your mountain. So swipe the panel to the right until you get to panel number two. And now, so zoom in on your mountain. My mountain is gonna be Monte Toro, here in Menorca, near Esmercadal, the, uh, the village of Esmercadal. This is uh, the mountain, as you see, this is the mountain, check this photo. Great, when I have uh, the mountain, zoom in, I'll tap on the top panel, on the button, on the top panel, so the black pin appears on the map, and now I drag in and drop in the black pin right on top of this uh, little mountain here. Great, great, great. This way I have my subject, my mountain, super visible on the map thanks to the black pin. Okay, the third step is to find my shooting spot. A shooting spot that's far away so I can get the big moon with my subject, with the mountain. And uh, I'm gonna try Santa Agueda, which, uh, uh, which is a nice hill over there. And I say that this is a nice hill because I have a beautiful view of Monte Toro from this spot, as you see in this photo here. It's a pretty cool view, super far away, so I'm expecting to have a, a big moon. The only problem I see now is that from Santa Agata, you see that the moon is rising pretty far away from my subject. So when the moon goes over my subject, as you see on panel number two on the top, the moon height is 1.3 kilometers above the ground level of the black pin. This is too high. It's one. This means that the center of the moon is 1.3 kilometers above the mountain. Too much. The shooting distance is awesome. It's 10 kilometers and it gives me a moon size, as you see on the top panel in brackets, of 93 meters, which is cool. And I know that's cool because I have the moon size also on the map. And as you see, the moon is as big as this building here on top of the hill, so it's pretty pretty cool. Tip, if you wish to have the moon size on the map, all you have to do is to tap the map settings button, this button here, and tap on the moon layer, and make sure that you have this show moon size switched on. This way you will have the moon size on the map, and you can compare the size of the moon with your subject, which is Awesome. Okay, let's continue with the planning. As I said, on uh, August 22nd, the moon is rising a bit too far away 
from the mountain. So I'll check, for example, the day before the full moon and see if I can get the moon rise even nearer to my subject. So swipe the time bar backwards until August 21st. And yes, now the moon is rising super close to my subject, which is what I wanted. Great, great, great. Next step is to find the shooting time. I have my shooting date, which is going to be August 21st, 2021. Let's fine tune the shooting time. So all I have to do now is to, I'm going to zoom a bit on my subject. I'm going to do long press on the time bar to go from a more precise way to change the time. And I'm going to swipe the time bar until I see the moon rising and align the moon with my subject with my black pin. In this case, I see that the moon height on the top panel is 158.8 meters above uh, the black pin. The center of the moon is 175.8 meters above the top of the mountain. And I have the moon size in bracket, right? The 93.9 meters. This is important because I'm going to be playing with the radius of the moon. Okay, let's plan the first shot. Let's imagine that I want this to have only half of the moon visible above the mountain. So I need the center of the moon to be at the same height than the top of the hill. So on the top panel where it says moon height, I need to have zero meters above black pin. Well, all I have to do is to swipe time backwards until I have zero meters, something like this. Oop. Zero meters. Have it here. Well, 0.2 meters, which is almost zero meters. So this way, I have only half of the moon visible because the center of the moon is at the same height as the uh, height as the mountain, right? If I want to align the shot, all I have to do now is to make sure I can move a bit the black pin to the side, the red pin to the south, to try to align, to have a better alignment of the shot. For example, here, I don't want to move it too south because um, I'm in Santagada, top of the hill, so if I move the prep pin too far away, I'm sure I'm going to be down the hill, and I don't want that. Okay, as you see now on the top panel, it says the moon height is minus 3.4 meters, so I'll change time a bit to put the moon a bit higher, 3 meters. Well, I think this is a great shot. I have this amazing building here, this church, on top of the hill, and I have a super huge moon, the same size of the church, uh, next to it half the moon and then the church could be a great shot and at what time does it happen i have the time at the time bar so at if on uh, august 21st 2021 at 8 31 pm if i'm on the ripping position i'll be able to photograph this uh, for i've just described half moon above the mountain next to this beautiful church that we have on top of monte toro in menorca which is a pretty cool shot. Let's plan a second shot. Let's imagine that I want to have the moon kissing the top of the mountain. So the bottom of the moon is like kissing the ground level, the top of the hill. What do I have to do now? Well, I need to swipe time until the center of the moon, its radius, the moon radius above the top of the hill. And the diameter is 93. So the radius is 46 more or less 40 well, 93.4 so it's 94 so at uh, yeah 47 meters which is the radio of the moon if i have the center of the moon at 47 meters above the hill then i'll have the moon kissing the mountain so what i'll do is to swipe time forwards until the moon height is 47 meters yeah i have it here great 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 and where's the moon well, the moon is moving towards my building. So I'll try to move a bit south, the red pin, to try to get it. Um, I don't, I can, go, I cannot go too much south. Maybe here. Yeah, and try to get the moon a bit closer to my building. You notice that every time I change the red pin position, the height of the moon on the top panel changes. Now it says 43. So I'll get back to my 47 meters. Okay, this is not a possible shot I can get. And this shot occurs at 8.33 p.m. As you see, planning different compositions is pretty quick using the top panel, the panel number two. It's awesome, the black pit panel. Use it. So I have everything. I have my shooting day, my shooting time, 
my shooting is spot and next step is to check the natural light I'll get at the time of the shooting. Let's go! Okay, to check natural light, just swipe the top panel to the left until you get to panel number three, this one. And here we'll have a look at the elevation of the sun. In this case, it says that it's minus 0.41 degrees, which is awesome. It's an awesome light, it's golden hour. The sun is about to set and it's a, uh, yeah, it's gonna be, a, the moon's gonna have a pretty powerful color. How do I know that? This is golden hour. Well, you want to learn and master natural light? Watch this video. But you, what you need to know is that golden hour is when the sun is the elevation of the sun is between six and minus four degrees, and from minus four to minus six is when it's blue hour, which is super important. And I want to shoot the moon almost always during blue hour and golden hour. When you're shooting natural landscapes, when you shoot in a city, yeah, it doesn't matter, you can shoot the moon at night and in one single exposure you'll get correctly exposed to the photograph too. Why? Because the city is lit at night. So thanks to the city lights, you'll be able to photograph the moon and capture detail in one single exposure and also capture detail in your foreground, in your buildings. But here, this is gonna be dark and I want to shoot during golden hour, blue hour. Well, it occurs, it happens that on August 21st, I can shoot it during golden hour and when the sun has just set, which is awesome. Okay, and the last step is to plan the field of view and depth of field using the depth of field map tool. So let's switch on the depth of field map tool, tap on the map settings button here, and then the map tools tap on DOF for depth of field and go back to the map. Next step is to set your camera. I'm using the Nikon Z6, uh, Antonis camera. Let's set the focal length. Let's say I want to shoot with a 500 mil. Nah, and at f8. And uh, I'm gonna be focusing on my subject at the black pin distance. I'm gonna focus on the church. Great. Which is at 10.2 kilometers. I'm gonna be shooting in landscape mode and my shooting direction is gonna be aligned with black pin. So I have the field of view aligned with the black pin and now I can swipe the field of view to, to reframe the shot. For example, something like this. I love this tool because it allows me to visualize what will be in the frame and outside the frame. If I want to shoot it in portrait, tap on portrait, you'll see how narrow it is. It could be another cool shot with the moon and your subject, but this time I'm gonna be shooting on in landscape mode. Great, more information I have here. I have the field of view information and also the depth of field information. So if I, if I zoom out, what I have here is the hyperfocal distance, which says is 1.04. Kilometers. And because the hyperfocal distance is 1.04 kilometers, is shorter than my focus distance. Remember, I'm focusing at 10.2 kilometers where my subject is. Because I'm focusing on something that's behind the hyperfocal distance, I'm gonna have my subject in focus because I'm focusing at it. And also, the moon is gonna be exactly sharp. So I'm gonna capture detail in the moon too, which is so cool. Actually, notice that the near limit of depth of field is 946.38 meters and the fat limit of the pole field you find it here above, above, above at the bottom above the google logo and it says that that's infinity so in this case i'm gonna have a lot in focus or acceptably sharp i would say from almost 1k to infinity is gonna be acceptably sharp but what's important here is that the moon is gonna be acceptably sharp and because i'm focusing on my subject my subject is also is gonna be uh, sharp dark, dark shark. <laughs> it's gonna be super super sharp. So I have everything planned. I have my shooting spot, shooting time, shooting date, uh, my camera settings. Awesome. Well, this video is about planning the moon when you know the shooting date. We've used the, in this case, the moonrise direction to find our shooting spot. But what happens when you have super clear what's the shooting spot and the photo you want? You know where you want the, the moon in the frame. You know the shooting spot and where you want the moon to be in the frame but you don't know the shooting day nor the shooting time how can you plan your moonshot super super fast well 
In this case, you need to use the fine tool you have here at the bottom on the left hand side. It's a super useful tool and you wish to learn how to use it, watch this video. In this video, I explain you how to find super fast moon alignments with buildings, but it also works with mountains in this case. So watch it. Now, you wish to learn how to take amazing photos of the moon, you wish to keep learning about uh, moon photography in general, well, I recommend you to download our super detailed moon photography guide. I'm gonna leave a link in the description of this video and in the first comment below. Download it. And if you like this video, give me a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next Wednesday in another video. And remember, they have the power to imagine, plan, and shoot legendary photos. Bye.